This is Josh Mandel, and I wanted to do a super quick introduction to the concept of smart health links. Uh, and this is all really early work, but I've done a quick demo implementation and started working on a, a sketch for an API. And I wanted to share both some of the use cases and some of the design concepts behind uh, this idea of health links. Uh, and I thought I would start off just by talking about um, some real world examples that I see as use cases. And these are absolutely mock-ups, but just to give you a sense of the places where this technology could fit. Uh, so the first example here would be an insurance card where you've got a ton of information printed on a physical plastic card and uh, somebody at the back office of a health clinic might be reading the information or photocopying details from this card to keep for their records. Uh, and it sure would be nice if you can include something like a, a QR code on this card that had information that was going to be relevant and complete and up to date. Um, and so the idea here is that by including this kind of uh, smart health link in the form of a QR code embedded on this physical artifact on the card itself, um, there's a few things that we can enable. One is if you've got software that knows uh, about these smart specifications, you've got a smart enabled client, and then you can scan this QR code and your software will automatically get access to data in the form of a smart health card. So that's a cryptographically signed FHIR bundle that would be issued by the insurance plan and it would have the full fidelity FHIR resources that you would expect uh, in order to make sense of kind of the data that you would see on a physical card like this. So that would include patient resource and coverage resource and maybe it would also even include uh, historical information like explanation of benefits. Uh, but the nice thing about this strategy is this QR links out to data that are hosted on the web somewhere by the insurance provider. And so you know these data are gonna be always up to date and you're not limited to the amount of information that you can fit uh, just in a physical QR code itself because this QR links out to the web. Uh, maybe you've got software that is not smart enabled uh, and you're just gonna open this in any old consumer or healthcare provider facing a QR scanning tool. And in that case, it might offer to open this link in a web browser for you, which could take you to a page that's hosted by the insurance provider where you can just view uh, and maybe copy and paste the details from this card. So even without any custom software integration, um, you still got a good path for resolving the data and making use of it in your own workflow. Now, a couple things to note here. So one is that by embedding a QR like this, so we can sort of link a physical insurance card to an online um, representation. Sometimes that's called the digital twin of that card. Um, and of course, the information that you would get on a regular card like this can also be augmented, uh, maybe with detailed coverage about specific benefits and uh, benefits that are remaining in this year. Uh, maybe this kind of up-to-date deductible information. Um, and of course, as a consumer, once you have the ability to store a QR like this or a link to your information, uh, you can actually start using that instead of the physical card itself. So you could carry this around in a file management tool or a digital wallet. Um, it has that in common with smart health cards, but this works even in cases where you can't fit all the data you need into a single QR code. So that's one example use case for smart health links. Uh, another would be use cases around uh, diagnostics. So for example, LabCorp offers this um, Pixel kit, which is a self data collection kit. You can take it home. It could even be monitored by somebody who keeps track of who you are and makes sure that you're using it correctly. Uh, but at the end of the day, a kit like this could come with something like a smart um, health link uh, printed off on a little card inside. And it says you could take this card and scan it to share uh, your results. You could let somebody scan this card even before you've got your results. And it would be a link that you knew would become good. The results would become available at this endpoint. Um, once you turned in your test kit and once the LabCorp had time to do the analysis. Um, so here, very similar story. If you scan a QR like this from a smart enabled client, uh, and so maybe this functionality could be built into um, an employer's return to work uh, portal, um, they can resolve a QR link like this to get one health card or more smart health cards, uh, all packed up in a single file. And those would be issued by a lab provider and they could include full kind of fire resources about the patient, diagnostic report, observations. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that the results can change. They can grow over time. So maybe they would aggregate a set of lab tests over some window of time. And if you were using a kit like this every week or twice a week, uh, your results could accumulate into one shared record that was resolvable um, through this QR link. And you wouldn't have to keep going through this workflow of sharing and sharing and sharing your data each week um, if you had this policy in place uh, to just make all the data available at this one location. Um, and similar story if you wanted to scan this from a 
normal client and just open it in a web browser, you could get a viewer that was hosted by the lab provider uh, and then let you see all the relevant data that would have been embedded in this smart health card, just view those straight in the browser. And a couple notable points here. Uh, one is that the card itself, this QR, I, I should say, can serve as kind of a ticket for results that don't exist yet. Uh, so it can be difficult to create something like a smart health card uh, for results that haven't been created, but you can create a link and then make the available data or make the data available at that link once uh, they've been complete, once the tests have been run. Uh, so this QR can provide stable access over time. It can provide a way to share those, those results. Um, and it can provide both a, a viewer for the data as well as a way for clients that are enabled with these technologies to pull out computable records and make a determination that you know, maybe somebody's got a negative result and so they'll be eligible for um, continuing to work from uh, a workplace over the course of the next week. So that's a quick example in the lab testing space. Um, and then finally, a slightly different use case, uh, but one that I'm just as excited about would be augmenting something like a, a patient portal. So this is a, a screenshot from my, um, my chart patient portal that I have from a healthcare provider locally here in Madison called Community Point. Um, and they've got various ways in which I can share my records um, by um, creating uh, a connection to doctors or hospitals. And I think of a smart health link as another uh, modality here for sharing data where you can choose which information you wanna share and create a QR code that anyone can scan in order to access those records. So it's a very compatible kind of workflow, but rather than just giving people a view into your records, you can give them um, computable access. Uh, and interestingly here, the trick would be uh, if somebody scans this QR code from uh, a smart enabled client, instead of just getting a fixed piece of data like a smart health card or a list of smart health cards, they can actually get Fire API access. Uh, so this QR link might actually resolve to a Fire API endpoint that's been enabled with the US core data uh, for interoperability and uh, offers Fire patient search and tells you which patient is in context, building on all the Fire API access and provisioning tools that we've got uh, built in from the, the smart health IT uh, and smart on fire certification requirements. So this becomes another entry point into a pretty powerful set of uh, EHR capabilities or PHR capabilities. Uh, and these would be data typically that would be hosted by a healthcare provider or by the EHR vendor that they've selected. Um, if you scan a link like this through a regular um, app, just a, a open it in a web browser, for example, then you get taken to an integrated smart on fire browsing tool. Uh, very similar to what you might see by default in a tool like this friends and family access that includes a web viewer uh, that folks can use to browse the relevant aspects of the record. Um, and then the notable details here would be uh, the individual user, the patient who has access to this portal, can pre-assign a set of scopes. So they might say, well, I want to create a QR code to provide access to my record, but I'm only interested in sharing results from a certain encounter, um, or I'm only interested in sharing uh, labs but not vital signs, those kinds of things. Um, you can protect the QR code with a pin, so you might want to assign um, a pin so that somebody who scans it won't automatically have access, but you can have an additional measure of protection to say that person first needs to type in a pin before they, they'll be able to actually um, get access to the data on the other side. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then as a user within this portal, you could review who's been accessing your records over time. Um, you could create a QR code that was uh, either short-lived or long-lived, and of course you could revoke access even if you had created a long-lived QR code um, at any time by using the management tools built into a portal like this. Um, so those are a few different examples of how you could use smart health links as an entry point to fetch smart health cards, to fetch bundles of smart health cards, or even to gain access to open-ended Fire API um, endpoints. And then the last thing I wanted to do was a quick look under the hood. So I've been talking about these smart health links, but what's really going on here? Uh, well, if you take a QR code like this and scan it um, in any app of your choice, what it resolves to is a text string like what you see here. There's basically uh, two parts. There's an optional prefix, and this could all be null, uh, but this prefix is what, what identifies a, a web-based landing page for potentially viewing the card. And then there's a required uh, suffix, which is the actual data payload uh, that describes how you can follow this link and get to a set of data on the other side. And we'll talk about each of those really briefly. Uh, so the idea of this prefix is, I mentioned it's an optional prefix, but if you supply it, it's uh, a URL of a web-based landing page, which could have um, institutional branding explaining who the issuer is or who's hosting these data. 
Uh, and then it might provide some context and background about what smart health links are really all about. It might provide a built-in application for viewing the data that have been linked to. And so this would be a really powerful capability um, in order to provide human usability as well as deep integration with tooling. Uh, so that could, could have a built-in viewer. Uh, and it could even have some user controls. So if this is representing data that's hosted by a service you don't use very often, maybe you don't have or maintain an account there, but this QR code or going to this prefix URL could serve as an entry point um, for actually managing um, the data associated with this QR code. Uh, you would probably have to authenticate through some additional factor, and then you'd be able to review access, uh, revoke the code, generate new codes from it, those kinds of things. So all of that is what I think of as an optional set of capabilities, but very powerful uh, that you can use by just prefixing um, the actual data payload with a URL. And now for the payload itself. Uh, this is what I would describe as a data access descriptor. The idea here is it's a small package of data that tells you how to follow the link to retrieve computable data on the other side. And minimally, it includes uh, the URL for an OAuth server where you can go to request access to some hosted data and includes a registration token, which also acts as a kind of key to, to the data request. And the idea is you submit a request to this authorization server, passing in this registration token in order to claim your copy of the data on the other side of this QR. Uh, and the QRs can be designed uh, to support um, different modes of use. So they might be set up so they can only be claimed once. And so that's a great use case if you wanna create a QR for the purposes of you know, walking into your doctor's office and sharing one set of records. They're the only intended targets, and once they've accessed the QR code, it's effectively uh, used up. Or you could establish it so it could be shared many times, so it maybe just becomes um, a card that you keep um, as a file on your phone and can share over and over again. Um, the data payload here also might include an expiration time, and that's kind of a hint to applications that scan it uh, so that they could see uh, right away if perhaps the QR code has already expired. Uh, of course, the code might have been revoked for other reasons outside of the expiration time, but this is kind of a useful hint for applications that want to be able to tell if, if something is amiss. Um, I mentioned flags in the QR that can tell you whether it's designated for one-time use or uh, to be used many times. Uh, and those flags can also indicate whether this QR is going to enable access in the long term. Uh, so if you're sharing something like access to your patient portal and you want, you're planning to keep it active for a while, um, you can designate this as a long-term use. So clients have some kind of hint that it makes sense for them to keep fetching and seeing if there's updates over time. Or you can designate it as a short-term use, in which case clients would expect to fetch the data once uh, and then effectively throw away uh, the links. They would never need to really follow them again. Uh, and you can also provide uh, an indication to the client about whether a PIN is required in order to claim this code. The actual PIN itself would be supplied out of band, so an end user uh, who is scanning in a QR link like this would have to type in that PIN. They'd have to learn it somehow and type it into their client. Um, but this flag here tells the client that, hey, uh, it's going to need a PIN uh, in order to continue with the workflow. And then there's also an optional decryption key that can be communicated in this data payload. And the idea here is to support use cases where the data could be end-to-end -end encrypted. Um, so if the organization hosting your data is something like a lab or a healthcare provider, this really isn't that important. Um, but providing the option for end-to-end -end encryption is really powerful because it means consumers can also start to host their data at, at other locations. And maybe even at locations they don't trust that much, or they might trust them in a technical way, but they don't necessarily want to trust uh, a random cloud server uh, to actually see their health information. And there's no reason that a cloud server would need to see the health information if all they need to do is manage access uh, and expose data when the appropriate uh, keys are provided. Um, so this decryption key allows an end user, a client, uh, having fetched the data, to then decrypt it for use on the other side. So this whole picture then provides uh, a clear and automated pathway for getting access to full structured fire data, uh, real rich clinical data on the one hand, and also provides kind of a, a soft landing or a glide path for users that might not have uh, such fancy clients uh, or might not have any fancy clients at all, but just want to quickly understand uh, what's being shared and maybe get a quick view of the data in a browser. So that's the quick pitch for smart health links. It integrates with health cards, it integrates with fire APIs, but it's really designed to kind of unify these concepts.